And the next uh, case, we'll call Dr. Sudhir from uh, Chandigarh for Applied Anatomy of PCNL. Uh, a very good morning to uh, everyone, uh, respected chairpersons, uh, my dear delegates. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Chandra Mohan for giving me an opportunity uh, for participating in such a great academic event. Uh, so, I am really covering the applied anatomy related to PCNL. So, these are my disclosures. Some of the photographs I have taken from the standard books. Uh, I will be covering first the gross anatomical relations of the kidney and then the renal vascular and the calicial anatomy. So, uh, of course, every one of you have the basic anatomy related issues related to the kidney. Kidneys are the retropatent organs where majority of the organs lie more predominantly in the anteriorly and significant amount of area behind the kidney is anyway free for you for doing PCNL. Uh, this renal axis is very important particularly for uh, persons doing PCNL because uh, here you can see the upper poles are slightly more medial when compared to the lower poles and the most important thing that is uh, he important here in this uh, photograph is that the upper pole that is a superior pole is very close to the uh, skin when compared to the lower pole. This has some bearing while doing the PCNL uh, procedure and the other one is the uh, axis of the kidney is uh, 30 to 40 degrees posterior to the frontal plane. So the one which I am talking about, if you see the upper pole, when a patient is lying prone, obviously the upper pole is slightly closer to the skin, but the lower pole is far away. Suppose you have done in this case a posterior inferior calicial puncture. So when you are doing the process, if some, sometimes suppose if the stone migrates into the superior calyx. So the difficulty with this is, when you bend the scope, the rigid scope down, you have, the one thing you will get the buttock in between, of course even you can flex it a little bit, but even then there in, particularly in females you have problem. And it is the axis, the anatomical axis per se of the kidney will not allow you to go freely to the superior pole. Other way around, if you do the same thing from a superior calyx, obviously the axis is, the ergonomically it offers better access for both the superior and also the inferior calyx. So whenever you are planning any puncture in PCNL, where you are expecting that you need to clear the superior calcial stone and also the inferior calcial stone, superior calcial axis is better. Coming to the relations of the diaphragm, yes, uh, in PCNL when you are approaching the kidney posteriorly from behind, obviously at the level of the 12th rib and 11th rib, you have the attachments of the diaphragm. And the pleural relations, you can see at posteriorly at 12, uh, T12 level, uh, you have the reflection of the pleura. So from behind, whenever you are traversing the kidney, so suppose if you are doing a supracostal puncture, you can see the 12th rib and the 11th rib and the 10th rib which are positioned just up and above the kidney. So when you are going through this track, obviously you will be violating the pleura. And more so if you are doing a supra 11th puncture, yes, there is more chance of injury to the pleura. So how to uh, avoid this injury to the pleura? Of course it is not possible in all cases of supracostal puncture, but yes, you can use the uh, physiological respiratory excursions of the patient to avoid uh, injury to the pleura. So you can see in these two pictures, uh, the one before, uh, this is end expiratory film and you see the inspiratory film where, it, where the lung border is going down, where the pleural reflection is. So obviously this much of space is there uh, during respiration. So whenever you are planning a supracostal puncture, so at the end of expiration if you puncture, yes, you can avoid a pleural injury. Uh, this is one of my patients where I did a supra, superior costal, supracostal access puncture at the end of the procedure when I inject the contrast, you can see the layering of contrast there uh, onto the pleural cavity but however there is no need to worry much because all these patients doesn't go into having uh, hydroneumothorax in the post-operative period. So this is the same patient's post-operative x-ray film where you can see the perfectly normal x-ray even after removal of the nephrostomy. And coming to whenever you are planning supracostal puncture you need to pass between the ribs. So where, where to go? When you are passing a needle in between you can anatomically you see the intercostal vascular bundle is actually seen at the upper part of the intercostal space just behind the superior rib. So if at all you are planning a puncture, you should pass your puncture needle in between the in the center part of the preferably in the center part of the intercostal space or as slightly lower but not close to the upper border of the uh, above rib. Uh, coming to the relations of the liver and the spleen, yes, they are located superolaterally uh, uh, at the upper part of the kidneys and these are generally not commonly injured but supposing uh, the same thing as the pleura is moving up and down with the respiration, even the liver and the spleen also they move down. So obviously the injury will be minimized if you do it at the end of the expiration and then 
particularly anterior calicial punctures. This is very important because whenever you are planning an anterior calicial puncture, when you do a bullseye puncture, trying to do a bullseye puncture of an anterior calicial, if at all, if it is needed, you need to move more lateral to the kidney because anterior calyx is somewhere here. Your posterior calyx will be here. So obviously when you go lateral, yes, you will be more closer to the solid organs. More so, patients with hepatosplenomegaly, you should be very careful. Coming to the colon, yes, you have the left colic flexure and the right hepatic flexure. This, everybody knows the location of the colon. Uh, this is one of my patients, one, uh, one and a half month back, one of my residents brought to me telling that, sir, this is a patient of bilateral stone disease. Uh, plan, obviously, is PCNL. Yes, he is a CKD patient, lean, thin guy. But uh, you see, then, just if you focus on this CT, you see the colon at the lower part of this. Stones are there, the co colon coming way down. Similarly, on that side also. So, these are cases which are very risky. Like, even if you see in this case. So, if at all you are planning PCNL in this posture, try to avoid lower pole and try to go from above. So, uh, this is one thing. And uh, particularly lower poles. Yes, the word of caution is be careful whenever you are accessing a lower pole, particularly in a thin individual. In prone position, obviously, the incidence increases. Another female lady, the same thing, lean and thin lady with uh, left-sided inferior calicial stones. She came to us, then got CT done, same picture, you see. The colon very close to the lower pole. So be careful whenever puncturing the lower pole. You need to keep the colon in view. Uh, this is a small videograph of the same patient, the CT which I have shown. So you can see that those lower polar stones and with the ureter catheter in situ. So when we are doing the RGP, just you have a look at the colon. You see the shadow? It's actually almost coming close to the lower pole of the kidney. So when you are puncturing such a kidney, try to make sure in uh, bullseye technique whenever you are doing Try to keep your needle aligned only onto the calyx and be watchful about the colon. Uh, coming to the renal vascular anatomy, yes, uh, the basic segmental vasculature of the renal artery, everybody knows about it, the anterior and the posterior supply. But co on contrast to the arteries, your veins are actually, they are communicating intermittently everywhere. So obviously there is a free circulation going on. So even on, if at all any vein gets injured, then there is no, not much problem. And where are these vessels predominantly uh, uh, oriented? So the most important thing is the infundibule, where the ca uh, main major vessel segmental arteries and veins are seen. But the most important thing in this is the uh, superior calicial infundibulum. If you are puncturing this area, yes, you are very close to major vessels there. And there is a very high chance that somewhere around 67% of injury of the vessels. So this puncture is always dangerous, very risky. Of course, the other infundibule also are risky, but this is very dangerous when compared to the rest. And you have a retro pelvic artery that is nothing but the posterior segmental artery of the kidney, which actually crosses the infundibulum of the superior calyx. So you should be careful because if you injure this, obviously there will be significant bleeding, but more so you see the same anatomy which I told before, that if the posterior segmental artery injures, a significant amount of parenchyma becomes a vascular. So, even if it goes for angioembolization also, the patient is going to lose a lot of uh, parenchyma of kidney compared to the anterior where there are multiple branches. So be careful in that. And the next thing is the so only way where you need to enter is the calicial fornix where you have the least chance of major vascular injury. Coming to the pelvic calicial system, yes, you have the orientation of the calyx anterior and posterior. So identifying the posterior and the anterior calicial orientation is very important since posterior calyx is the preferred calyx to puncture. Why? One thing is, the basic segmental vascular subcell itself gives that it is very close to the avascular brodal's line and then it will be the shortest and the straightest part to the pelvis. And how to identify this? Uh, the, there are two slides, coming slides, I want everyone to please focus. This is, you see the kidney on this side. Uh, if you are doing PCNL, suppose here you can see that this is anterior, this is anterior and this is posterior. You see the posterior calyx here which is angulated 20 degrees from the frontal plane. However, the anterior calyx is angled 70 degrees. But when you are doing uh, fluoro intraoperatively from above, obviously this calyx will be seen more medial, this will be seen more laterally because the rays come up from, or this will be more, this tip will be more lateral. So this is the broadal type of system which is generally seen on right kidneys and uh, coming to the other system which is exactly opposite to that, if you do the fluoro in such a case, here the angulation is more medial, so it would, here the anterior calyx is more lateral. So just I want to show you one live example where this is one case where you have the posterior calyx here. Same system, left kidney is the seven, the posterior calyx, both of them two are the uh, aligned 70 degrees to the frontal plane and they are seen medially on fluoroscopy. Similarly, if you go on to the left, right side kidney, you see the, these are the posterior calyces which are only 20 degrees aligned. So that's why they are more lateral. Here you see they are more medial. So just a small clip for 30 seconds, if you can watch here where the posterior calyx of the same kidney which I have shown the previous CT scan, 
This is a pelvic calicial stone. So when I have first injected the contrast, you see the post calyces are not seen. So when after that, when we inject to, to because the previous post calyx was seen somewhere at this location. So when you inject air in such a system, you can see that faint post calyx which is seen as white thing which is overlapping onto the stone. So obviously when you puncture such a area, you will be more safe. So this is a uh, other, other patient also, same similar picture. You can just uh, see the uh, uh, posterior calyx, how it is seen in this. These are the, and whenever you inject contrast, this is Hudson type of system, the calyx is oriented 70 degrees to the plane. So you see the faint white area, that is the, actually the calyx which is actually turning on to medially. So you should target that calyx to puncture while doing the procedure in zero degree and you can see the guide wire going freely inside. So and the calicial orientation, yes, superior calicial, you have a single infundibulum and a compound calicial system, whereas the middle calyx always you have two pairs of calyces anterior and posterior and whereas the inferior calicial system, you have the uh, single infundibulum or you can have sometimes the anterior posteriorly oriented calyces. So this I think the, my uh, colleague has already covered this ampere classification. So concluding my slides, uh, that PCNL is, yes, it's a partially blind procedure, I say, because when compared to open surgery, you are partially blind, but if you're not confident with the anatomy, what, are, what is there around, all around, then it would be completely blind. Thank you so much. Uh, one point which I like to mention is how to identify the posterior calyx. Now, you have very rightly mentioned that in the middle part of the kidney, 95% of the times you will get a classical anterior and posterior orientation. Yes, sir. But in the upper pole, virtually yeah. all the calyces are posterior calyces. Sir, but I can show you one of the, uh, if you can I show the previous slide, actually I want to show one of the sample classification photo. See, in upper pole you have the comp compound calyxal system. And in that, sir, sometimes some, one or the other calyx can be posterior also. Uh, if you go to, through the literature and sir. studies done by CT scan, yes, sir. they have proved that most of the, uh, virtually 99.9% .9 of the times, the upper pole calyces are all posterior. You tend to focus on the lateral most calyx because if yeah, you puncture definitely. the medial one, you are likely to injure the posterior the segmental posterior artery. Segment artery. Yes, sir. The problem is most in the lower pole where it's a compound calysis. And you have mentioned in one of your slides that it's about 57% of the times where you get a classical orientation. So yeah. getting a classical posterior calyx in the lower pole is most difficult. Yes, I agree. If you go through the literature by studies by mm. Isner, where they have done CT scans, mm. they have found that you may not get a classical anterior posterior calysis in lower pole. Sometimes it may be more anterior and less anterior, but not classical anterior and posterior. Yes, sir. So uh, uh, just I want to show yes. one more slide, sir. For, uh, uh, see, you the, in this yes, system yes, which I was yes, talking yes. about, uh, yes. see here, yes. so this posterior calyx in the lower pole here you can see, actually but the problem is it is actually overlapping onto the, overlapping onto the uh, uh, infundibulum. That's why yes. they are very hardly difficult to identify. Sometimes you will find, sometimes you will not. Uh, in the superior calyx system which I want to show one more picture, here you see, see, see the arrow mark onto that side. Uh, is a pointer actually. Let me show hey. this one. Once or the otherwise, but sometimes you may not find this. So you need to puncture this, but don't go to this area, which is more dangerous. Obviously, and the easiest way, if you are likely to find an overlapping posterior calyx, would be to take the siam away from the surgeon, yeah, yeah, definitely. and the posterior calyx moves towards you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, Sudhir.